Steph from the BMW DIY Guy. I'm really excited to continue my suspension series for my BMW F32 and finish out my sway bars. So this is going to be the DIY install for the front sway bar in my BMW F32 from KC Design. I am really excited because this is going to not only finish out that build out of the improved sway bars, but is going to bring a substantial difference to the handling of my car. Body roll is something that really can be an issue. You know that feeling as your car kind of rocks back and forth. You know, as you go into a turn and you feel the body start to roll on you. That really affects how you're steering, your weight distribution through the car, and even in emergency situations, it can make a radical difference. I've gone to some, some driving schools and I've seen people doing radical avoidances and you know when you're outside of the car and you can see it and you see somebody put a really radical control input and you watch their car just roll it's amazing to see especially from the outside so this is something that's going to bring a level of stability and control and improvement to my car as you do upgrades to your car it's not always about just going faster in a straight line handling matters so before we get started please click subscribe and, and the little alarm bell next to it. That way you get all the notifications of my upcoming videos and I always have projects on my bench. So let's get out to the car, let's get started and show, show you how you can do this work yourself. All right, so let's get started out here in the garage. So a couple of things first, we're gonna do some prep work. I need to take my top strut bar off to, because I need to be able to take my engine cover off. One of the things about doing this work is we're gonna to have to suspend the engine. So I've got an engine support bar and according to the BMW guide, I actually we're actually gonna use the tow hook. There is a screw in mount about right here that we're gonna screw the tow hook in and that's what, what the engine support bar is gonna grab onto. So I have my car up in the air. So I've already jacked my car up. I'm using my quick jacks um, that I've talked about quite extensively as I always do. Let's just mention if you're jacking your car up, do it securely. So if you're using jacks and jack stands, use four. Make sure that they're in a secure place. And I love my quick jacks, uh, which are really nice. And even if you're using those, make sure you're using them safely. All the way up and then back down until it hits the lock position. And then you're safe to be underneath the car. Obviously, I've taken the front wheels off. So a uh, little trick there. Uh, my wheels love to stick on, so I'll undo the bolts. And then you just turn around backwards and back kick the wheel. Um, with shoes on and uh, to, to break it loose of where the aluminum can adhere down to the rotor hat. So um, I've taken the wheels off, I've jacked the car up, I'm going to take this bar off next. I'm just going to loosen the bolts, the two bolts that hold it in on both sides, slide this out, get my cover off and I'll show you where the tow hook uh, attaches to the motor itself and then we're going to get the engine uh, bar uh, set up as well. In further prep, couple of things I've done so obviously still looking at my bare wheel here what I've done is is I've gone in and I've straightened my steering wheel so I know its exact position because one of the things that we're gonna do in this process is we're gonna unhook our steering linkage and that cannot be turned I want to stress that as strongly as I can so with all of this once that steering linkage is unhooked you cannot turn your hubs at all if you turn your hubs that's changing your steering orientation you cannot move your steering wheel all those sort of things right super super important so i just want to point it out i'm going to say it again and again especially when i get to that point so i have the engine strut bar on or the engine support bar okay so what i've done is this is uh the link for this uh, will be in the video description it's just really simple you might be able to rent one of these also from your local auto parts store like autozone or the similar um, i didn't ask i just bought one so then it really wasn't all that much so what i'm looking at right here is your tow hook so in between these two positions it's one of the reasons why i had to get the cover off you've got this screw in point right here for your tow hook now the one thing i want to stress is i've seen two different kinds of tow hooks on f30 series i've seen short ones and long ones my car came with the long one and it would not fit in it just simply wouldn't um, and this is according to the tis guide that you use the the tow loop so um what i was able to do though is i was able to raid the hook off of my uh, e53 x5 and it fits just fine so I screwed it into place so it's in nice and firm it's not going to thread in all the way but it's probably about half threaded in and then I've got 
the support bar on. As you can see, there's not a lot of clearance here. There's not a lot of space, but it's enough that I can get this pulled up and into place. There's a little bit of gap here and it's pretty tight. I could probably turn this a couple of more times, but the big thing is you want to keep this from, uh, from the motor from dropping at all because we're going to pull off the two bottom engine mounts. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pull off the belly pan because that has to come off and uh, it very likely that both wheel well fenders, both of these will need to come off as well. So I'm going to take, going to take a look at these on both sides. I'm going to take a look at the belly pan, then I'm going to show you what's next. The belly pan is off. There's one smaller uh, protection pan that we're going to pull and I'm going to crawl back underneath the car in a second, but I just wanted to show the right hand side, go ahead and pull the cover and pull the ground off your battery because we're going to be pulling some plugs and for everything else for the steering rack and we want to make sure that there's no power to those controls. So take a 10 millimeter, loosen the nut on your ground and disconnect your battery. As you can see, my belly pan is off. The other thing we want to do is we want to take this guard off as well, which is also three eight millimeters across the front, and then it should slide out. So you can see it's kind of hooked towards the back. So I'm going to pull those, and that'll let us get to the steering rack. So I'm going to pull that, and we're going to keep moving forward to disassembly so we can get it out. All right, so we're looking from the driver's side of the car. I've also pulled off these corner trim pieces as well. On the driver's side, you've got that, I believe it's the thermometer. So when you pull the, the eight millimeter screws to get this plate out, unplug your thermometer. I've also done it on the other side. Now you can also see, now you can see that the steering rack here is exposed. So what you're gonna wanna do is get these four clips, one, two, three, four, to loosen the steering rack or the cabling for the steering rack away. And then we're gonna be unplugging the steering rack. So I'll show you that next. But you gotta pull those plates on either side or those covers on either side, eight millimeter bolts, and then use, I'm gonna use a plastic trim tool because these are just plastic pressing clips uh, for the cabling for the steering rack. And I'm gonna pull that. The cabling is loose. As you can see, there's kind of three uh, uh, plastic plugs across the way and also there's this little fitted piece down here that fits into the end of the pipe right here and there's another little pressure clip and I actually reached up above and kind of pressed in the fingers on this pressure clip to get it down a little more cleanly okay so it's now down and loose and then you've got your two plugs here on the steering rack this top one you squeeze top and bottom and then pull off they're going to be really stiff. I mean, chances are these never have never been unplugged since your car was was manufactured. So they're going to be really stiff. This has this big red clip that I pressed up. I actually used a plastic trim tool to very gently press up on this. And then this plug was super tight. I found that just pulling it didn't want to come off. So I, I rocked kind of front and back. And now it's off. As you can see, that is a big, huge monster plug. So now you can take the cable and just kind of swing it off to the side and get it out of the way. So now your steering rack's unplugged. So what we're going to be looking at next is uh, we're going to be looking at the bolt on your steering column, right? There's steering controls that come down. So let me get focused on that and then I'll show you what we're going to do next. Okay, so quick catch up here. So um, obviously I've removed both wheel well liners. So the front wheel well uh, liner is eight millimeters. There's a whole series of eight millimeter bolts all the way up and around. So go ahead and take those out. And then the rear liner has uh, a couple of eight millimeter bolts, a couple of 10 millimeter plastic nuts, and then uh, two T30 bolts, one that goes here underneath. That's kind of one of those plastic press in, half screw, half press in. And then another one right back here, which is obviously not there anymore. You can see that in that white spot, that's where it goes. Uh, a bigger, heavier T30 that goes in right there. So and then that liner's out, because we're gonna have to get to a couple of bolts there up on the front bumper and uh, to get easier to the, get it easier to the steering rack and get the sway bar out. Now, the sway bar is this guy right here. So this is, a little bit hard to see with the backlighting. Sorry, this is what right here is what we're going to be taking out. So we just need to get uh, the frame low enough to get to the connections to ease that out. So now we're going to get to the steering rack. Um, let me get back underneath the car and I can show you the bolt we're going to take out. It's a reverse Torx. All right, so here comes the point where we're going to take the bolt out of the steering rack. So here, here's your orientation. So driver's side control arm, bottom of the steering rack right here. Sorry, my, my headlamp strap is in the way a little bit. And then, because what I wanted to do is you can see right there, lit up by my headlamp. That is an E10 
uh, uh, reverse torques. And this is the point where when you loosen this, uh, you cannot move your hubs or your steering wheel. You will damage your steering. Do not do it. So when you take this off, be super careful. The thing we're gonna do next after that is we're gonna pull the three bolts on the engine mounts right here, where you can see, sort of, my fingers are in the way. <laughs> One right there, there's one up above, there's one back behind it, and you'll see those, those as well. So um, those are a different reverse torque size. I'll have those in a moment, but I'm gonna pull the steering rack bolt. Be super careful. Do not move your steering wheel or your hubs after this point. Okay, so I backed the, uh, the nut holding that, the steering control arm out. It's a, like I said, it's an E10. Um, I was actually able to get at it. It's a little hard to see right now, but I'm gonna put my hand right here. It actually, it's easier to get through it from the side, which is why you need the wheel well covers out. So I got at it from the side pretty, pretty easily right here with a long extension um, and a angle joint. So that's out. And then we've got the engine mounts right here. There's three on each side. Uh, those are E12s and those are out as well. And so again, make sure that your engine support bar is on and ready to go. So now what we need to do is remove the end links from the end of the sway bar. So here we are looking at the passenger side. Here's the end link right here, here's the nut. So what you're gonna need to do, let me get around here a little bit. As you can see, I've got my 16 millimeter ratcheting socket on it, but you put a T30 Torx, it's a counter hold. You have to put a T30 Torx into the center of this. So I'm gonna hold that with my wrench with a T30 bit in it, and then I'm gonna back this nut off, which is a 16 millimeter nut. So I'm gonna do that to both sides. So the engine mounts are out. I've also taken off the left front or passenger front wheel cover. Uh, in, the, in the wheel well is in preparation. Um, I don't know if I need to take the back one off yet. I may not. And if I can, if I can help it, I'm not going to. I want to do as little as I can to get this out because that makes the work faster. All right, so I'm going to take off the, the link nuts on both sides. Okay, so as you can see, the swing arm is off and it's off on the other side as well. The other thing you have right here is you have your ride height sensor on this little arm. And this is just a little ball and socket joint. So all I did was I used my plastic trim tool and I just backed it off that joint. Also where that connects, it might be a little hard to see right now, right, right here, you wanna unplug the sensor right here. And those are just clips at the top and bottom, uh, pull and unplug that. Now let me come back out to show you towards the front here. Next thing we're gonna do is you've got two bolts that go to the front bumper, right? here on both sides. Those are 13 millimeter bolts that you can just back out. Now, one of the guides I've read indicates that there's a little clip on this frame. Now, I, I haven't seen it, so maybe that clip doesn't exist anymore or it doesn't exist on my car, but I'm gonna be really careful. If I find it, I looked for it on the other side, I didn't see it, I'm gonna look again, uh, but I, I don't think that there's a clip here, or at least one that I've seen. If need be, I can pull this plastic ducting off to get it out of the way, but I'm gonna prefer not to. And again, lastly, keep in mind, you're working around your wheel hubs on both sides right now. Do not lean on them, do not pull on them. Don't do anything to change your steering alignment right now. Okay, so I've got the bolts out on both sides. Now, the one thing that I think I realized what the information I was looking at was talking about, they're talking about this loop right here that comes down and comes through. Just pay attention to that and make sure they're in the correct place when you put it back into place. It's not like a wire, it's this loop right here. So, and then the other thing I wanted to point out to make sure you put them back in the correct way, the bolts are slightly different. The squared off one is in the back the pointed one is in the front. They're both 13 millimeter uh, and they're off on both sides. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna get my floor jack and support the front of the subframe because the next thing we're gonna do is loosen the lower subframe bolts two or three turns at most. I mean, absolutely at most. So don't use a power tool, use a socket. Uh, and a socket wrench uh, to get just a couple of turns. You just have to loosen it just a little bit. So I'm gonna support it and then we're gonna loosen the back bolts. So you could pull pretty much all of your mid body panels to get to this bolt, but I really don't see the point when you can just kind of lean it down out of the way. As you can see right there, there is the opening for the rear subframe bolt. Now, surprisingly, they're 18 millimeters. So um, I've loosened them on both sides 
two turns, uh, like the information I've seen recommends. So I just pulled the covers down out of the way on both sides, was able to get to it and save some time, not have to pull off the mid-body covers. Okay. And then the front is supported as well by my jack. At this point, we're going to be transitioning to the four front subframe bolts. Okay, so for orientation, we are on the driver's side, looking <clears throat> towards the front of the car. There are four bolts. One kind of here in the middle, right there. That's an E14. And then back there in that hole as well. That's an E14. So we're going to remove all four of those. And as you can see, my front of my subframe is, is supported by my floor jack. So I'm going to make sure that that's super solid. Then I'm going to pull all four bolts. So one more thing to add here really quickly. So this is looking from the nose of the car at the, this is the front of the subframe. There are three little clips. Or there are little push-in plastic clips here, here, and one to the right. So driver's side that you're going to want to take out so this hose is loose as well. So I forgot to take that off. I'm going to take that off now and continue to sag the subframe down a little bit so I can get to the bolts that hold down the collars on the sway bar. One thing I wanted to point out here really quickly uh, is I've got a lower brace from my oil cooler, which is right here on the passenger side, that's getting in the way. As you can see in the bottom of this bracket right here, it's hitting this brace. So that's a T30, which will take that brace off. So I'm gonna take that brace off so the subframe can sag a little bit further. And then we'll take the collars off that are holding the sway bar down. Uh, and those are 13 millimeter nuts. Okay, so for perspective, here we are looking in through the driver's side wheel well. Um, you can see the frame is lowered just a little bit, the subframe. And then look in, and you can see that bracket over the top of the sway bar is now off. Um, I found they're 13 millimeter nuts. Um, I, I had great difficulty getting my 13 millimeter socket on there, so I actually found I have a half inch ratcheting wrench. So either you have a 13 millimeter ratcheting wrench or a half inch uh, fits perfectly. Um, I actually found a, a ratcheting wrench gets into those spaces much more easily to get those nuts off. So now, now those nuts off are off and the sway bar is completely loose. So now the goal is going to be to slide it left. So that means towards the driver's side um, and then to, to really suck it left to get the other end, the passenger end, out and free, then it's going to drop out the bottom. So I'm going to move the whole thing left and then I'm going to show you how to fit this thing out. Okay, so the lighting's a little funky right now, sorry, but uh, uh, with a lot of backlighting and there's not much I can do about it. But as you can see, the, the sway bar right here is 90% out and I wanted to leave it in the last little bit in place so you could kind of see the direction and how I took it out. So basically what you have to do is you have to work it left towards the driver's side. Now the brackets that go around the bushings, I took those off because they really want to hang up on things. So I took them off um, and set them aside. The bushings themselves didn't want to come off. I think they've been glued down or at least they act like they've been glued down or they've been on so long that they act like it. So it would have been nice if I could have slid those off, but it's okay. So it's, it's twist and work left, twist and work left, twist and work left. The other thing that I did is that you may need to bring your front subframe down a little bit. So when I first brought mine down, as you can see right here, um, it's down quite a bit now. Um, when I first brought it down, it only came down uh, probably an inch or two, which was enough for me to get to the nuts around the brackets for the sway bar, but not nearly enough to give me the motion I needed to work the sway bar left. So I, you can pry the front part of the uh, subframe down between the subframe and your main struts that go up above, the main body struts that are up here, which give you a good solid metal steel point that you can apply a little bit of pressure to bring the subframe down. I adjusted my jack. I'd bring it down a little bit. I'd sag the subframe and it'd be tight against the jack. I'd bring my jack down again a little bit and so on until I had enough room where I really felt like I could move this around. I could really manipulate this. And as you can see, it's out now. So you move it left until you can get the passenger side twisted and down and out. And then I'll just feed this out the other side and we'll take the new one and feed it back into the same position. So, but before I do that, let's, let's talk about the new one, the new bushings. We want to, uh, uh, put the lubricant on them, the grease on those and get it all back into place so we can start reassembly. So here's the new sway bar, obviously in the orientation it's going to be when it's installed. 
So, and we've got both bushings and we've got the grease that's gonna go on the inside of the bushings. Now, the other thing I noticed on the OEM ones is that the split on the bushings was to the front of the car. I don't know if orientation matters, but I'm gonna put these back on in the same orientation just to make sure. So this is gonna be a matter of uh, simply putting this in reverse order how you went back up in uh, into the car, right? Or, or how you took the OEM one out, it's gonna go back in the same way. So I'm gonna put the driver's side in first, kind of insert it, twist it into place, work, you know, work the mid body back in, twist, the, the, twist it so the passenger side can get up into place and get it in the correct orientation. So let me get it in and I will show you what that looks like and any challenges along the way. Okay, so this was super simple to get back on. As you can see, I've got the, the link arms back on, just stuck through the hole right at the moment to help keep it in the right orientation. Um, I had the left, driver's side bushing off, if you give the darkness, I had the left bushing off to make it easier to fit up into this space, um, fit it up in, pushed it left, fit in the other side with the bushing on it, just laid it right in place, but also put the link arm on both sides. So it's just like that. I mean, it, it was that simple to get on. So now we just need to put the bushing brackets back on. Like I said, those are 13 millimeters, so I'm gonna put the bushing brackets back on, and then we're going to reverse this process and get the subframe pushed back up into place. Okay, so we are back in the reassembly phase. Uh, I've got those two 13 millimeter bolts, and remember the pointed one goes to the front and the squared off one goes to the back. You need to get those fit into place really nicely. Uh, that bracket really, uh, helps maintain the position of the intercooler as well. So I found that uh, jacking the subframe back up to level and then kind of manipulating the intercooler with my hand to help line up line up that bracket worked really, really well. So I had those, both those bolts secured down uh, tight on both sides. So now it's gonna be a matter of reversing the order and putting everything back together. So we're gonna put our the nets back on the arms over here on both sides. The brackets are tightened down. These front braces are tightened down. And really, uh, it's a matter of just, we're putting everything back together and we're almost done. So the next thing are gonna be the subframe bolts, which are those uh, reverse torques. And I'm gonna get the uh, proper torque value for those. So, so as I do them, I'll tell you. And we're, we're almost done. All right, so let's walk back through reassembly here. Um, we've torqued down the subframe bolts, as I mentioned before, like this guy right here. Uh, and we still need to torque down the rear. The rear need, need to be done, but the front are torqued down to 120 newtons. The rears will be as well. Uh, the control arm is back on and just pressed into place. Be careful not to break this plastic cap. The cable for that sensor is plugged back in. And then our, our, our new sway bar is, is tightened down here at uh, 28 newtons if I remember correctly. So this is on and tight and it is also on the other side. So let's talk about the steering rack. So the steering rack cabling is back into place. This, the, the small plug is back in, the big plug is back in. Snap all of your little plugs back into place. Get, your, get the little uh, plastic piece that fits into the pipe here. Get this piece pressed back into place. Also as well, this pipe that, that goes across the front right here. So make sure to put the front back in and put those plastic right here and here. Put those plastic expansion rivets back in and also over on this side as well. So pretty much everything underneath is, is back together. Like I said, I need to tighten up the rear uh, subframe bolts here really quickly. I'm gonna take care of that. And then we're gonna start putting all the rear body or the lower body panels back on and the side panels as well. Um, in addition, don't forget, you have your engine mounts back here uh, with your re reverse torques. Um, those were snug tight uh, when I took them off. They came off without too much torque. So I've put them back on just, just hand snug. I didn't crank them down with my impact wrench or anything similar. So those are all good and ready to go again. So all I need to do is tighten my subframe, my rear subframe bolts, and then all of the body panels can go back on. So that's really gonna be that reassembly of the two wheel wells, this lower guard panel that goes over the steering rack, uh, and then uh, the, the big belly pan. Um, also, as I mentioned, as I probably mentioned before, um, I've got the, uh, 
It's right up there, sorry, it's hard to see, but don't forget also to put your steering, uh, that, that uh, reverse Torx bolt back into your steering link. So I did that, that was the first thing I did once I put all of it back together because I didn't want to worry about bumping one of my hubs. So all the major components are back in, now we just have to put all of the, the small pieces back on. Okay, so let's do a quick walkthrough to make sure everything's back together. Obviously the wheel is not back on yet, but that's the, that's the last thing. So that protective, starting from underneath, that protective plate underneath is back on with the eight millimeters. The body, uh, the belly pan with all of the eight millimeters is back on. This wheel well with the that big T30 bolt right back there, all the eight millimeters, and then those 10 millimeter kind of cap hats, plastic uh, nuts are back on, front, with the all the eight, eight millimeters the lower plate as well with the thermometers plugged back in and the eight millimeters are all secure including the air duct so that's good to go as we come back up i've taken the engine strut bar off i uh, put my engine cover back on which by the way i i really love that i painted it i really opened my head and i love it it turned out really well <laughs> so i love that so that's back on and then i put my my top uh, Shock tower bar back on and torqued down uh, those bolts. Those were 16s, 16 millimeter if I remember correctly, and those are all back in together. So that's great. Come back to this side. And then again, we're looking at, I only took off the front on this side, so it's back on with all of the eight millimeters all the way around. Everything is torqued down to the, to the correct pressure. Um, or the correct torque, so that's good, and everything's back to go. So all I need to do is put the wheels back on, and so the trick, as I've talked about before, the trick of putting your wheels on, is that you put them on just snug when you first put them on, and then you don't torque them down until your car's on the ground. And then you do the star pattern, remember? So one side, across, 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 across. Do not go in a circle. I hope that you never do, but don't. So always go in a, go in a, uh, star pattern as you're putting them back on and it's 108 uh, foot-pounds of torque on those bolts according to BMW that and that you lower your car back down and you're all done all right all cleaned up tools put away took the car out for a drive now I want to share something kind of ironic so right after I got the work done and I had the car out on a drive I had to make a radical safety move in my car around a car that moved into my lane at 60 miles an hour and was braking so the irony after doing all of this suspension work and doing everything to improve the handling of my car, I got a chance to prove it right after I got done with this work and it was amazing. The difference really truly was amazing. I was able to put in really smooth control inputs, really smoothly avoided the car in front of me, didn't break, didn't slide, zero body roll. So. As you look at it, as you look at upgrades, I'm often asked, you know, you know, can, can I give opinions on the differences? Is it really making a difference? Well, everything I've done in this series was just brought to an absolute point of conclusion just a moment ago and really made a difference in my car. That the handling I can tell was substantial in the change and in the improvement. So this is something you should really take a look at and, and look at doing for your car. The same thing as I've said before in the other video series on the suspension upgrades. Suspension upgrades are not always just coilovers. Will I be looking to do work like that? Absolutely, I will be. But it's not just that, it's all of the other subcomponents. So your bushings, your sway bars, and all have all of those pieces, how they fit together, really make a difference. It, it is a matter of the whole being better, not just one piece or the other. So I really want to thank KC Design for making a fantastic product. The difference in the front sway bar is dramatic. I get the, I get the OEM one out and I was holding the new one and it feels probably twice as heavy. Now, I'm not sure if the OEM one is hollow, but it sure as heck feels like it. So if so, that would be a 24 millimeter hollow front, front sway bar versus a 28 millimeter solid. And that is a huge difference in what it's gonna do for the handling of your car. So if you have any questions, please leave them below. I try to address anything I can. I really thank you for your time. I thank you for watching my channel. I thank you for clicking subscribe and the little alarm bell. And I'll see you on my next project.